Welcome back everyone. This is Laura with Laura Diamond Painting with Laura. And today I'm going to do a whip and stitch on the the can or uh what do you call it? The cross stitch that I'm doing and I'll show you the picture of what it's going to look like. Let me move my thing out of the way. I think it's right side up. I can't tell if it's right side up or wrong side, so I'll just do both sides. Kind of looks like something that could be either way you want it, because I don't know what the, the, uh, what do you call it? What the Chinese words say, so I'd have to look at it back online. And today, I thought we'd go over some of the things that I couldn't show you. So, what I'm going to do is um, we're going to do one whole row. We're going to go up. Just making one slash mark in one direction all the way up here. This is 11 count ADA. I'm using two um, threads of the DMC floss. Now, we're going to go up so that they all look like this. You see how they're all like that? And now, we're going to come back. and cross them all. And you don't have to go under, you know, up and down and up and down. Just go into where it's supposed to go. Get my hand out of there. This is really hard to see, huh guys? And then come across with your needle. I'm going to pull it through and it made the X. So I'm going to go down again. We're going in the opposite direction this time. And then I'm going to pull it and make the X. And that way you don't have to put the thing down and then pull it out and then pull it, put it back where it needs to be. I thought I'd show you that's kind of an easy way to do it. I gotta finish it that way because I kind of started that way. All right. So, how is everybody doing today? I hope good. Everything's kind of good with me. I got tomorrow off, so I thought I'd do this whip and stitch tonight. May do another one tomorrow, I'm not real sure. I kind of like this embroidery thing. It kind of gives you a break from diamond painting, which is nice. I haven't been back to the beaded cross stitch because, I don't know, it just, it seems so complicated for my, my little pea brain here, so. But this seems to do okay. I, I think I can get this. It's just a matter of making sure I get the right colors in the right place. And it does come with a pattern so that's kind of nice but this is it's pretty simplified so um, I don't have to look at it as much as um, the beaded cross stitch and so I really like it I do and I was looking online here to see if I could find any of these others maybe something smaller you know like little pictures I don't see many um, Shush, Molly. Mini, um, oh, what do you call it? Like you would, I guess, if you went to a place that sold um, cross-stitch stuff. I don't see many kits, if you will. They are either big or they're different. You know, they're like partials, if you will. And I don't 
fancy wanting to do a partial. I, I want to do a full picture. But um, hate is just out of the question um, for me because it, it's just too much. And I'm not, I'm not that into it, but, you know, I guess I have to be for this thing. But this, it's one of those things where you can just put it down and then come back and pick it up. You know, I mean, if you're working in one uh, little area, which really helps. I like that part. Um, and when I was doing the video cross stitch, it wasn't that I would lose my place. It's just the pattern... I'll show you what I mean. I'll just give you a brief look. Hang on here. See if it'll focus. The pattern is so close and it changes so much that I would have to come all the way up. I can't find where I'm at. Like at the end of this row, you know, and just go all the way across, you know, for this page, you know. And like, uh, I was looking at Krolopix and she was doing hers, and she decided that she could do it one page, so to speak, at a time, um, which helps. And then I'd just mark it off when I was done doing, you know, that row. So I wouldn't quit until I had finished the row I was working on so I'd know right where I was at so but this seems to have bigger areas and it's a little bit easier because I was always afraid with the other one that you couldn't do that and I guess I still have questions about cross stitch I don't know why I mean I've been doing the actual stitch since I was six so th that part isn't the problem it's just and I've found with this that I can work in just one little isolated area and finish it. Or I can go and do all the purples or all the browns or all the blues. But I thought with the beaded one, if you did that, you'd miss out on these ones that just had a line on it or, or something. So it was just kind of weird. And I guess just hard to get used to. But, um, oh, I might go back to it, you know, if I have nothing else better to do. I've only got about 50 diamond paintings that I really need to do. Oh, I don't need to do all of them, but, you know, I mean, it, it's not a lack of something that I don't have to do, you know. And this, I can kind of pick up and do for a little while and, and then go back to diamond painting. And, and I'm just fine, you know. So... And I like this. It's it's calming too, you know, just like diamond painting. But uh, I find that diamond painting I have less to quiet Molly. Sorry about the dog. To uh, concentrate on, I don't have to concentrate as hard. I should say, on the diamond painting because it's all laid out and you just put the the colors right there. And I'm not getting sick of it. I'm just. Needing a little something else to look at, you know. Because it seems like... I tried today, as a matter of fact. Went to um, go and uh, find some more diamond paintings. I was going to look for something small. And I just... I can't do it. I just cannot do small diamond paintings anymore. Um, I know for a fact... And I think this in my brain, every time I go looking for one, I don't get anything less than a 40 by 50. And that's where I'm at. I must have 25 diamond paintings plus that are either 40 by 50 or, or above. Because I just know the picture, because I like the picture. It's not going to show up or turn out right, you know, or as detailed as I want it to be. So... I guess I'll just wait. I mean, it's hard to wait for Diamond Art Club to get their act together to do their thing on the 15th. I don't know that I can wait that long. So I've been looking for things that are solitary in diamond painting. Or, you know, like I said, in embroidery. And I'll have to see what I can find. But uh, 
it, it's quite hard. I know exactly what I want from Diamond Art Club and uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, unless there's something brand new that um, is um, coming out. But um, other than that, I did find some really pretty um, flower. I'd like to do like an embroidery of like a vase of flowers or something, you know. Something, I want to say simplified, if you will. And I wouldn't mind doing that in embroidery. I, I used to do that kind of a thing. But it seems like it was an actual counted cross stitch. So, but, uh, and I like that. And I like the change of colors and all that. And I did see some uh, beaded, beaded cross stitch. Now, they were partials. So I'm not real real hip on that, but I could try it, you know, because I saw the one that uh, Diamond Paint, I think it's called Diamond Paint, with Donnie had gotten, and there, it's not like it's on Adia cloth. It's on something real smooth, so it would be hard to judge where to put your X. I think maybe maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I'd like to get some of those littler kits, but the, I've seen the, there was like a, a beaded cross stitch, and they did show the actual, whoops, I think I just pulled that out of there, cross stitch, where they, um, it was a partial, and it just looked funky that the beads were just here, or just there, or whatever, and then the rest of it was a printed canvas, so it just kind of looked kind of weird to me, so I didn't know how that was going to get together there or show up so I don't know I, I'm still kind of undecided I I haven't figured that one out but I like I started to say I saw one and I think it was from Golden Pano or either Joy that or Joy Sunday at AliExpress and it was of um, cranes in like a marshy area and I thought those were really pretty course I always lean towards the Chinese pictures um, but this wasn't so Chinese you know I mean it was just two or three cranes you know like walking around in the the marsh and I don't know what parts of it were done or whatever but I know it was actually a partial so I would have to and it was beaded cross stitch and uh I don't know. I probably should have gotten that one first before I got that other monstrosity to work on, and then I probably would have gotten it out of my system. But um, but I thought, well, you know, and I can't seem to find, like I said, I just can't find any kits. Maybe I'm looking under the wrong thing um, at uh, either Amazon or AliExpress. I know Amazon doesn't carry as much as AliExpress, but uh, we'll see um, which one that we want to do. <sighs> if I could just find some, and I don't know, I'm used to, I guess, shopping at places like, well, I've shopped at Walmart, but um, they used to have like a quilt store or a place where, it was actually a fabric store, I guess, you know, but they also sold embroidery stuff and embroidery kits and that kind of thing when I lived in Cheyenne. So I'm, I'm used to looking at that kind of thing. I'm not used to ordering it online. So we'll have to see. You know, I'm sure I could probably go back to uh, some of Stitcherista's stuff and, uh, you know, like before she started diamond painting and see where she actually got hers online. But uh, some of those kits, they can get quite spendy. But uh, I'm not sure that... I kind of like it printed on the pattern, on the the thing, instead of having to count that cross stitch, because I don't know. I think that's kind of why I quit the last time, because it got to my eyes and was giving me headaches doing all that counted stuff. So, but, uh, yeah. And I know there, that Hade stuff is just absolutely beautiful. But it's just a little more detailed than I want to take on, you know, for right now. I just like something I could accomplish, you know, without having to get it huge. 
or whatever, but you find that uh, the smaller those kits are, sometimes the more pixelated they get, just kind of like the diamond kit, uh, kits are. So, I don't know, it's six of one half of a dozen of another, but I just haven't made my mind up. So we'll just keep sewing on this. We'll be sewing on this for the next lifetime or two. But uh, maybe it'll go faster than I expect. But uh, it's just kind of nice to pick up. And it's not, I mean, it's huge. It's, But you always have a different color you could work on, you know, to bring out all the, the pretty flowers and stuff. I think once I get into doing some flowers... And, you know, seeing some progress that uh, I'm sure, you know, things will start looking up, if you will. I'm just, it's just depressing. You know, because you, you do this and I think, God, I didn't do anything on there. And it's not like I was just talking and not doing because it's just the progress is slower, I guess. And it's slowing down my, my diamond painting too, but oh well. We got to all do something different every once in a while, I guess. But uh, what's everybody else working on? Or is have any has anyone else bought any more of the um, the beaded um, kits, the beaded and uh, cross stitch kits? And how is it going for you? I, I like to know those kind of things. Um, I think it's. It's just different, you know, and it, usually I don't have this problem of uh, learning different things. I can, you know, usually pick it up. It took me a while to learn how to paint, of course. I mean, God, I I, I paint for, painted for 10 years, but, um, you know, to start something, I didn't, I always painted with acrylic and, um, I like that because it was washable, it was doable in the house, and I that end fast result again. Here we are. Um, I uh, wanted it to dry fast, so that's why I never got into oil painting. But uh, I like to use the acrylics because they they dry. Now I'm out of thread here, so I'm going to show you. Okay. This is what I was trying to show you the last time. Let me see if I can get it up here. See if it'll it'll focus. Come on, focus, focus. Now I'm on the back side. And I'm gonna back it out a little bit. Okay. So I've gone through these three little stitches here. And you pull it through. And I just make a loop, whoops, make a loop and go through. And that way, it, and that made a knot is where I was going with that. Wait, where's my scissors? And then cut it off and you don't have so many knots in the back. And that's what I was trying to show everyone the last time. And I was like way off camera. So I, I wanted to make a point of uh, doing that. So here's what we've accomplished. So far, let me kind of tip that up. So, so it's coming along. It's a pretty color. I I quit this be over here because it was you just couldn't even see me doing it. So I'll do that off camera. But I like to use color when uh, I'm cross stitching or or diamond painting. And that way everybody can see where you're adding the drills. This stuff is kind of fuzzy. It's weird. I don't know if it's cheap. Or what, but I have never ever seen uh, what do you call that? DMC floss do that. It might be the DMC numbers, but I think this is pretty cheap thread. And I hope, I just hope it'll be okay. It's just fuzzy, and I don't remember it ever being like that when I did cross stitch. Because it was, it was pretty much top of the line, you know, and it laid down well. And I don't know, people seems like I'm walking into one nightmare after another. As long as I don't go back to mixed media, we're good. Forgot where I put my needle. Sorry about that. And when I uh, make these come apart, I have two threads and I take 
one in between these two fingers and one here and then I put my thumb where the Y is let me see I'll turn it this way and just pull along and when you run out of room come on put my thumb there again and it's unraveling down here at the same time and just keep coming and it's done now you have two threads but that's the only way I've I used to stand there and then it'd get all knotted up at the end oh yeah it was great I thought my mother was gonna lose her mind with me having to have my thread separated so had to learn that it's kind of like baiting a fish hook you know it either works or it doesn't and oh I used to have such knots and she would get so so irritated with me but thank God we were only working on one embroidery stitch at a time because yeah I'd have been nuts I, I I'd be the first one to say it if I had to teach somebody how to do this but uh, I don't know it's and it's not hard I mean you know as long as like I said I'm only teaching one thing here we're just doing a cross stitch guys so that's cool but I just can't figure out why this thread is so fuzzy and it must be I mean you would think the price of the what do you call it of the kit that it would be um, you know pretty fair of thread because it probably cost them nothing to do all this mess you know to put it up there on the the thing where the money would lie would be in the thread because it's usually so expensive. I don't know what it is, a skein now. I haven't bought thread by the skein in probably 15 years. So, I mean, I I don't even remember what it was back then. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Has anybody ever worked with silk thread? I've never worked with silk thread. And that was one of the options when I bought this kit was do you want cotton or do you want silk thread? And I was like, I don't know what, what I didn't know what silk was, I guess. I had used the LeMay and I didn't like it at all. I mean, it's good for, um, what do you call it? For uh, accenting things, if you will, because it was just hard to get in the needle and hard to do this with and hard to make it lay down because it would just get nuts for me. So, I, I can't imagine, you know, maybe I should go to Silk Thread next time. But, uh, so I haven't ever had any experience with that. And we always use cotton thread because that was the cheapest when I was in school. That was 40 years ago, people. So, I don't know, you know, if anybody has used Silk Thread, I'd appreciate their, their input on how it works and if it lays down well or or just how that that is and I have like I said I hadn't done enough needlepoint I don't remember it seems like when I did sorry when I did uh, needlepoint um, we used yarn instead of um, what do you call it yarn instead of thread thread you know like cotton thread so I don't know I don't know. It's a mystery. I, I'm not looking to solve it right away, but, you know, I just, just wondering, you know. And I, they used to sell all different kinds. I can remember in the 70s, but the needlepoint kits, I think that's what that was. It was needlepoint kits that made purses, because that was all the rage. It was the, and I don't remember if that was like on plastic canvas or if it was, you know, just needlepoint. I, I can't remember, but I used to go to this place where I lived um, when I was little that I used to go get my yarn. And uh, it was called the Lamb Shop. Imagine that. And they had all kinds of beautiful, beautiful yarn. But um, all the little, little old ladies would sit in there and they'd knit or they'd crochet or... Or work on their needlepoints and stuff, or 
or whatever it was, you know, sewing crafty thing that they had going. And uh, they did have some beautiful things, you know. I mean, all those purses, they had jewels on them. And I don't, I'm sure they don't sell that kind of stuff anymore, you know, because it just went completely out of, out of fashion. But uh, it was all the rage back then. And I remember it had rhinestones that you could put on it and all kinds of fancy stuff. But see, I was in eighth grade, anywhere from like, I would say fifth to eighth grade. And so, I mean, I wasn't going to carry that kind of a purse anywhere, you know. That was for adult women, you know, as far as the patterns, because they were all into it. That, and they were always making those wood purses that had uh, stuff stuck to them or uh, something to, I don't remember if that was rattan. I don't, oh. It was like straw, if you will, but they would sew with, I want to say rattan, rattan, is that the word? Raffida, 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 not rattan. Raffida material and put like flowers and stuff and these bags would be huge, you know, it would be something you could, they'd be like beach totes and everything, but uh, they were always fancy and I was always interested in some kind of crap. So, you know, about as much on that level that I got into was the embroidery, the knitting, of course the crocheting, and then I did a little bit of macrame. I didn't like macrame at all. It was just too weird. I made a macrame thing. We had to make it for school, and I wanted to make one of those things where the hippies all had, you know, the door. They had the beads that hung down in the doorways that was real popular in the 70s and uh, yeah well Laura decides that she is going to I, I don't want to call it cast on or tie my thread on I had a refrigerator rack people because I figured I could carry it around and work on it well the only problem with that was I had about nine strings going across that refrigerator rack and they were all the twisted like a, a coil, you know, I mean, that's the way the, the macrame pattern was. I got them things about 10 feet long, all eight or nine of them, and I was going to hang them from my door frame. I measured them and everything. I knew exactly what I was doing. Oh, yeah. Well, the teacher wanted to know how I was going to get that off that refrigerator rack. Yeah, yep, yeah, I had to cut them off. Yeah, it was hysterical. They were all done in like a... Oh, a bright yellow and a bright purple. and Because my bedspread at the time had purple and yellow in it. Oh, yeah. yeah that was one of my ingenious product projects. So, yeah, we've come a long way. Well, I don't know. Here we are still doing stupid stuff. So, I don't know. It's not stupid. It's just, God, really? You, you bought what? And it's how big? Oh, yeah. You'll finish that. Yeah, I'm going to uh, have my granddaughters, I'll just will it to them and they can finish it. Because I can't even finish My son brought this up the other night. He goes, Mom, so where is the quilt you were going to make me for 8th uh, grade? Mind you, the child wanted a, uh, what do you call it? A Lone Star quilt. And it had pieces that were 2 and a half inch um not two and a half. They were like an inch and a half. What do you call them? Oh, if it's not a triangle, it's the other one. Trapezoid? Is that the word? You know what I mean. To make the points on the diamond. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was hand sewing it. I got the major star done. And then it has the insets of the others. Oh, yeah. Okay, my son is going to be 30. 35 this year, 34, 35. Yeah, he still ain't got it that. He said, yeah, Mom, you just kept kept uh, pushing up the time of, whoops, crap, of of when I was going to get that. It was like when I graduated, when I, you know, got back from college, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, I said, yeah, it's a pipe dream at this point, son. Just a pipe dream. So, yeah. It's sad. 
but mom never got that done. I got the bit major point done and then I decided to embroider it. Then I spilt coffee on the whole thing and stained it to pieces. And yo, know, it never got done. I had a wolf background all picked out uh, for the back sheet of it. It was just absolutely beautiful. Yep, nope, not happening in this lifetime. And I had hand cut all the pieces to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been down some hellish roads. So, you know, when you say you got diamond painting Armageddon coming from a hooligan, oh, it's absolutely nothing compared to, you know, what's going on with the rest of this. So, I got to get this going the right way or it won't work. I notice if I go the wrong direction and do something different, then it's all messed up. So I have to figure out how I can get it all going so that I can do it this way instead of going up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh my God, no. So, yeah, and I haven't, that's another thing I haven't seen is embroidery kits, you know, that would have several different, like you'd embroider the flowers, or you'd use that long and short stitch, or or whatever, you know, or the daisy stitch, and there's some I can't do. I cannot do that freaking herringbone to save my butt. I tried, and I tried, and I tried. Am I doing this all the right way? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. But, uh. There's some I like to do, you know, and that would be different, too. I'd like to do maybe a pillow, something that about that size, you know. Let's not get carried away. And I haven't seen those kind of kits. Is that, like, just nobody does that anymore, or, or what? what is the deal? I haven't figured that one out. But, oh, I did it again. I did it again. Shoot. Um, I'm going the wrong way. But, so, I'd like to do that again. I mean, of course, I could make my own pattern if I really felt the need. But, I don't feel the need, I guess. I did so many years designing and doing, and it's like, no, that doesn't interest me. Let somebody else do the designing part. I'm, I can handle the stitches, you know. So, yeah. We'll see here. But I'm getting a lot done. Whoops, I left three stitches up there. Oh jeez. I'll get i I'll get it on the back back way. But uh, and this is nice cloth, it really is. It's nice and stiff. I like that. Like I said, after I've handled it about twenty times, you know, 